and not much musical ability either. But I do know an awful car when I see one, and I'm looking at one right now. You remember in Dallas that dreadful chrome Corvette-based thing that Mark Grayson used to drive? Well, this is even worse. It used to belong to that shy and mysterious chap, Liberace, who had his name painted on the spare wheel covers and on the wind deflectors. And then he had candelabras nailed everywhere else. It rather looks as though he spent a million pounds on the thing at Woolworths. No, I really mustn't be too harsh. After all, Liberace was a serious musician behind all the kitsch. You never know. There may be a half-decent car under here somewhere. As a matter of fact, there is. If you peel off the plastic body, the Draylon frock, underneath you'll find a Ford Mustang, complete with a five-litre V8 engine. But because they've elongated it, they've managed something pretty special, almost unique. It really is as nasty to drive as it is to look at. In fact, the only motoring journalism award it's likely to win is the Big is Best category, a classic case of never mind the quality, feel the length. Remember, he used to drive it around Las Vegas, and if you're competing for attention out there with the likes of the Excalibur Hotel, you need something pretty striking. A metro wouldn't do. And anyway, I'm fairly sure... No, I'm absolutely positive that Rover does not offer candelabra as an option on the metro. Though this may look pretty daft in the English countryside, but against a Vegas backdrop, it's as civilised as afternoon tea. Liberace's car, it's called a Zimmer by the way, will be at the show, so why not go along and see what you think? Even if you hate it, you're unlikely to send the great man spinning in his grave. As he famously said to one critic, what you said really hurt me. I cried all the way to the bank.